It's your favorite or soon to be favorite binary ninja here with my very first Omnified hacking tutorial. A little bit of background. I am a partner Twitch streamer and ever since November I've been taking games. Um, I've been ripping them apart, learning how they work, and uh, writing my own little magical assembly code to make the games Omnified. Or uh, basically, as I call them, absurd carnivals of death. I used to do the uh, hacking on stream um, in front of everyone, live. Uh, and all that. I've decided to uh, instead shift from doing that to uh, doing the uh, hacking off stream. So let me get work, you know, done quicker and all that. But it'll also allow me to uh, edit it, uh, make a really nice video for y'all to see, uh, for anyone that finds this stuff interesting and useful and educational. I think you will. This approach allows me to uh, basically, uh, you know, do, get all my hacking done. Um, have it recorded and all that, and then um, focus on just the gameplay for the live streaming stuff. By no means am I a master at this, I am learning along with all of you, but um, I do have years of uh, professional software development work and uh, various many strange tasks I've had to carry out that have required reverse engineering, and um, I think that you will find this to be a very interesting uh, look into that world. Um, basically, the uh, the format of this, how you'll see these videos is, as I hack the games, right? Um, I'll create a short hacking uh, video for what I'm doing. Um, today, um, I'm currently playing Omnified Monster Hunter World, and I have the need of updating my hacking code, the hacks, to uh, work with the latest version of Monster Hunter. So I'm gonna basically show you how you can um, uh, uh, update uh, your own code um, so that it works with a um, updated version of the game you're targeting um, and um, various steps you can take to prepare for such a thing um, because it does takes it does take some uh, uh, preparation to do this all right guys here we got the latest version of a uh, monster hunter world so let's see what we need to do in order to get uh, our code to work with uh, this uh, newest version basically uh, you'll be surprised um, it doesn't automatically wreck your hacks that you have, the code that you're targeting, you know, won't necessarily change. A lot of things might work. That's great. But there are certainly a number of things that will change and um, you need to be able to uh, update these things to work with the newest version. So let's take a look at what we got with our current um, hack. Here we have the source for the, uh, our current um, assembly script that makes the game omnified. So, as you may know, there are a number of ways that uh, code can be injected into a process. One of those ways is via AOB injection, which is probably, I'm gonna guess, like probably the most common way of doing it. AOB injection is uh, helpful in the sense that uh, it's gonna be a little bit more upgrade proof than other ways of injecting code, but not necessarily. The way, of course, uh, the AOB injection works is it looks for a, uh, a, a unique sequence uh, of an array of bytes in memory, and um, once it finds that array of bytes, a sequence of bytes, uh, that's where it decides to put the code in. The other way of injecting is, uh, I think it's termed in Cheat Engine as full injection, which is basically, you know, you're gonna give it the uh, discrete location of where it is in memory, typically the, the, the uh, executable and then an offset, and it's gonna inject there. That's how I, uh, I typically always use that form of injection myself, um, full injection, because it is by far way faster than um, AOB injection. This is like leagues faster. And if you're writing pretty complicated scripts like uh, mine turn into, where you have tons of injections going on, the AOB scanning takes forever. So if you do use full injection, um, what most certainly will break when your uh, game is updated is uh, those discrete and specific addresses in which uh, you are injecting the code. They, you can find those in probably in the define statement, as we can see here. This, for example, is a discrete address I'm injecting this code into. Really, anything that deals with uh, location as far as the code is concerned at all will probably no longer work. So even though we're using full injection here, um, I also record a uh, the unique array of bytes in order to find that code. So if I need to upgrade the game and retarget the hack file, I can just use this to find that code because this will no longer work. All right, so let's uh, start to get to work here. So for the first... Uh, Heck I have here, uh, it's just basically something that retrieves the coordinates of the player. Let's take a look and see what is occupying um, 
memory at this location now. Let's go to this address. Okay. So previously we had um, code that looks like this. This is basically reading from uh, a location structure for the player. Um, this is actually the X coordinate for the creature, the player in this case, um, uh, located at the uh, 160th offset um, from the base of the structure. Let's just put it in the EAX register. So, now what do we have here? Something completely different. In fact, uh, this looks like a bunch of garbage. <laughs> so, not surprising at all. So let's uh, instead scan for uh, this uh, bit of code and um, see if uh, we can find it in the newer version. So to do that, just uh, take the array of bytes and uh, we're gonna do a search here. We're gonna array of bytes, paste it here. So the, the actual memory that we're searching, right, is gonna be, uh, it's not actually writable memory, it's gonna be the non-writable memory, the read-only memory, the code, you know, that comes in the binary. Uh, so, so right click here, do preset scan all memory, and let's search for it, hopefully something pops up. Oh yes, we found something right there, very good. So uh, let's take a look at it here, and um, as we can see, it's pretty far away from here, you know, a decent amount of distance. Um, and it looks pretty much like what it did before. I know this by memory. It's kind of, kind of crazy, and a little sad. Let's uh, update the code to use this then. So pretty simple. A AOB has uh, remained the same. Um, we're just going to update the address that's used to the this address right here. You copy the address here. Let's copy the address and paste. Very good. And now this function will hopefully work with the new version of the game. That's the coordinate function. Now working with the latest version. Okay. And there's no other code here that I that will break, basically because the original code here that we're replacing is as it is here, and it's just you know a simple uh, read from memory. Um, there are some particular uh, instructions that are no longer going to work that you're going to have to update to what's in the the new version, and we'll go over those if we encounter them while doing this. So next one here is for the player's health. You might notice here I have two unique array of bytes um, saved. Why is that? Well, the first one typically is basically uh, the array of byte that's closest to the actual code that we're replacing. The next uh, array of byte is basically uh, code that's um, somewhat close to the code that I want to replace. The only reason why I have that in there is if I think that the code that I'm replacing might um, change in a newer version. There's particular little clues or hints that um, you know should ring some alarms if you see them and that you shouldn't um, automatically assume are not going to change. In particular, uh, the makeup of various memory structures. We'll go over those as we encounter them. So let's see if this returns anything, hopefully it does. Most of the time you're gonna find that you will be able to find the code again in the new version. This is gonna be in a very different place. There we go, very good. All right, here's a new place in memory. Um, very significant difference in where this is as well, but even more so. So uh, let's grab this address here. This is uh, this code that we're uh, updating to work with the latest version basically just grabs the player's health as well as the Palico's health and then uh, writes it to a pointer. If you do hear any uh, loud yelling in the background, any screaming, uh, my wife is currently playing Overwatch. So uh, she gets uh, pretty into it. So it looks like this worked here. It's the same code though. It looks like it. Very good. So this should work just fine then. All right, moving on to the next one. The next one uh, basically initiates the player apocalypse. This hooks into the, the player portion of my apocalypse system, which is a game neutral uh, system I've created that basically um, replaces how damage is handled in any game um, that you plug it into. It basically replaces the uh, um, discrete damage that normally occurs when you get hit with a system that basically um, randomizes or generates a random effect instead, such as you get hit and there's a 12% chance that you receive 69 times damage, which sounds like great fun to me. And I mean that in all the ways possible. So let's see if this still exists. Is it going to? Looks like a pretty uh, harmless bit of code there. Let's see if we can find it with the new version of Monster Hunter World. Get a little nervous when it's, it says found zero for a while. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I found it. Looks like uh, it's located here. Great. Um, we're just gonna have to update the address then. Uh, let's do that. All right, here is the uh, new uh, location for the where we hook into the player apocalypse. All right, now let's look at the enemy apocalypse hook. Basically, uh, the enemy apocalypse is the uh, code that goes off when an enemy uh, is getting hit by the player. Typically, it's not as fun as the player apocalypse. Um, I don't do random 69 times amounts of damage to the enemy. Well, actually, I do have a uh, function standard to the apocalypse system called uh, Kamehameha, which actually does 10,000 times damage to the enemy, but it can only go off um, you know, one out of 2,000 times or more. Let's uh, look at this here. So here's the unique array of bite for this here. Now, before we uh, before we even like search for this, do I think this is gonna work? Maybe. This is the original code right here. Basically, this RSI plus uh, 41EC, uh, this is where the, the damage that's about to be applied to the enemy is stored before it uh, uh, subtracts it from the health. This is a potential uh, problem code here. So one, one reason why I know that just by looking at it is because of how deep into the, uh, you know, memory this is. And because it's so deep into it, you know, it's, it's a, there's a high number here. There's, um, it's a very large and uh, complicated uh, structure. Um, there's a good chance that, you know, if any features were added with the, uh, you know, uh, version that we're uh, targeting, the good chance that, uh, there's gonna be some additional members that have been inserted um, maybe before where this is. So this number might be different. It's not, you know, guarantee anything like that, but I've seen it time and time again. Let's see it if we see it with Monster Hunter World. This is my opportunity to look smart and look like I know what I'm doing. First, let's probably uh, get this in here right. There we go. Okay, let's look for it. Up, oh, found a result. Okay, I guess I didn't know what I was talking about. Well, actually that's not true. Um, if you notice, this is not the same code at all here, right? This is a load effective address, R8, into R8 from RSP six plus 60. Right, that's not the code that we're targeting, right? We're targeting this little code here. And what this code is actually doing, and never said what it does, um, is it takes the damage and it's subtracting it from maximum six, which is uh, the SSC register that's uh, actually uh, has the enemy's current health assigned to it. This is actually calculating what the new health is gonna be after the damage is done. So, but how did we end up here? How is this possible? Well, that's because I didn't write down uh, the array of byte for this here because I was so sketched out about it. No, I didn't trust it. So I probably scrolled up a little bit and I grabbed uh, the array of byte um, for instructions that were located above the thing that I care about. So let's see if that's true. Oh, what's this right here? Here's the subtraction. Um, Scalar single FP subtraction, of course, from this XMM6 register. Oh, what's this here? RSI. Whoa, that's a different looking number, isn't it? It is. So this broke between versions here. It's, uh, the damage being done to the enemy is no longer st stored at um, the offset of 41 EC. It's stored at 41 F4. So um, that's gonna have to be updated. And um, I was correct. If we did try to uh, scan the uh, unique ray of byte, uh, that this would have given us, it probably would have given us zero results. So, there you go. Now, you don't have to always be as paranoid as me, um, but I don't know. If you see something that looks like it might uh, be impacted by a version update, you might want to uh, just try to find some code around it that looks like it wouldn't be. Okay, so we're gonna have to update this then, aren't we? So the address here has changed as well. Now, not only do we have to update the uh, address here, of, uh, you know, we'll, where we're injecting into, but we have to uh, change some of the code actually, because this, again, this structure change here, that's not where we keep the damage anymore. So let's update it to the new one, which is 41F4. Also note that if, since we are changing um, the code here, we're gonna have to update the uh, cleanup code as well uh, that normally accompanies this. Let's see what that might look like. Um, also, we're gonna have to, um, update the assertion statement here because uh, this will not work of course because these are no longer the bytes at that location change from an ec to an f4 all right very good let's um make sure that is um handled in the um cleanup code as well there's that cleanup code and then also let's update this here i make a reference to it inside the actual custom code that i wrote anywhere else yes right here the rest of this should work i would hope Next one is the hook into the predator system. 
uh, Predator system is yet another uh, game neutral uh, system I've devised, which is basically a smart uh, speed hack for enemies that uh, makes them uh, able to move to you and kill you quicker. We'll be making a whole other video for that as well. I thought the name was appropriate, Predator, you know. Coming to get you quickly, scary. Okay, um, let's see if we can find that as well. What does the code for that look like? Okay, so that's a pretty deep uh, uh, address in the, in the struct right here. What this is, is um, I do believe uh, at rex plus e250, this is the, the change to the uh, player's or um, creature's x coordinate. So if I'm, you know, my x coordinate is uh, 100, and I'm moving you know, six steps positive, um, this would return six here. And somewhere down the line, it's going to add that six to my coordinate. That's just basically where the predator system is always supposed to be uh, uh, connected, is uh, at the place where it's doing uh, the uh, location update maths, which can be in a place that's very far removed from the actual update, update or right to the location coordinate. That can be difficult to find and tricky. We will, um, uh, I'll be recording examples of me finding those tricky to find uh, locations and code uh, next game that we have. All right. Well, hopefully that didn't change. We're about to find out. Is this going to be the first one that sucks? Nope. We're good. All right. All right. Sweet. All right. Well, let's uh, update that address then. We shouldn't have to update any of the code here. At least I hope not. That'd be awful. Um, okay. What's next? What are some other things though that you have to worry about, uh, remember, so we have to update our, uh, the address, right, uh, where this stuff is um, being um, injected into in the game. What else might break though? Well, if any of the original code that you're replacing, when I'm talking, when I, when I mean original code, you know, that the name should be, should explain it on its own here, but basically, if you know, here, I have this highlighted here, I'm going to do a, uh, let's do an AOB injection even. Okay, there you go. Um, here's here's that original code, right? This is what we're going to be replacing. We get, uh, basically, th this gets replaced with a jump statement that goes with this code. That will then eventually call this code. If this original code is a jump statement, like you know, any one of these here, see this jump statement here? It's going to jump to this area of the code, right? Uh, here's this offset. This will most likely no longer work in an updated version. So if you have any uh, any explicit jumps in your uh, assembly code that you wrote, and you shouldn't, you will need to update those. And you shouldn't really have uh, jump statements in your code at all, frankly. And I don't think I have any. Um, and that's because um, when I am uh, injecting a code to hack the game, I, uh, I try to avoid um, doing, like let's say I wanted to actually, you know, inject right here. I wouldn't want to, I usually try to avoid actually injecting right where the, a jump is. I want to in inject somewhere um, where I don't have to worry about that code that will potentially break between versions. Um, uh, like this also applies to any call statements. And sometimes you can't help that, um, whether uh, the, your, uh, the code is going to have that or not that you're replacing. But I also try to avoid that as well. Basically treat them the same as jump statements. I don't think I have either in mind. Um, so I'll look at that, a clean update. And um, so I'm very curious to see if this will work then with the latest version or if it will just crash and burn the game. Let's just see if uh, it compiles or assembles. Looks like it does. Now, if this does work the first time, um, then I swear to God, this wasn't edited. <laughs> and look at that, it injected. Beautiful. That'd be really cool if it worked. I thought I crashed. And it looks great. Success. The Omnified hack has been updated to target the latest version of Monster Hunter. I, uh, you should look forward to more uh, great Monster Hunter world content now at the latest version, finally. So I should be able to enjoy lots of goodies, right? Well, fuck yeah. All right, guys. Well, it's pretty simple. Updating uh, your code to work with a later version. Uh, you just have to prepare beforehand. So remember, if um, your code contains any of those jump statements, it's broke. 
uh, and of course any changes to any of these trucks uh, uh, between versions must also be propagated to your own code but uh, that doesn't happen too much of the time so you know guys thank you for uh, watching me uh, hacks is a game you'll be seeing more of these in the future basically as I do any more hacking um, I will be recording it and uh, putting it up here on YouTube there's gonna be a bit of lag time between these videos because I'm still figuring out how this editing thing works and all that I am done uh, I'm fine Monster Hunter World so I'll just be playing that on stream and the next hacking videos will occur when I am hacking the next game and um, those should be pretty interesting. In the meantime, I might be uploading some videos that uh, kind of go over these systems that I've created that makes a game omnified. You know, like the Apocalypse system, Predator system, and all that. But yeah, until next time, bitches, uh, Omni out. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, you know, feel free to hit that uh, like button. For every uh, 10 or so good individuals out there who enjoy the content, there exists potentially one or two buttholes who are probably gonna hit dislike because they don't like me. You know, I've been streaming on Twitch for a bit now and I've made a number of enemies. So, hey guys, until next time, see ya.